Auto Line Daily is brought to you by Bridgestone, passion for excellence. This is Auto Line Daily for August 10, 2010, and now the news. No sooner does the Ford Motor Company sell off Jaguar and Land Rover to Indian automaker Tata, and what happens? They start turning a net profit. And not some namby-pamby profit, but a healthy $370 million over the last three months. Bloomberg reports that Tata's chairman, Ratan Tata, wants to grow Jaguar's lineup with a station wagon, a roadster, and an entry-level model. And don't forget, he's got Carl Peter Forster running those operations, the guy who used to run GM of Europe. And when you add in the rest of Tata Motors, which also makes trucks and the little $2,500 Nano, the group posted a net profit of $430 million. How's China going to get the automotive expertise it needs to compete globally? It's easy. They're just going to go out and hire the people who have that experience, no matter where they are in the world. The Chang'an Automotive Group has hired 60 experts from overseas. In fact, it just held a recruiting effort in Detroit, where it hired 10 industry experts. The company also opened R&D centers in Nottingham, England, and two in Torino, Italy. It expects to hire another 50 to 60 overseas experts in the next two years, but it's not just relying on foreigners. It also has 3,000 Chinese engineers. Portland, Oregon just became the first city to open a public quick charge station for electric vehicles in North America. The station was manufactured by Takasago Limited, a subsidiary of the NEC Corporation, which worked with Portland General Electric to install the station. It can charge an EV with lithium ion batteries to an 80% charge in only 20 to 30 minutes. The first vehicle charged at the station was a Nissan Leaf. Over last weekend's IndyCar race at Mid-Ohio, Honda announced it will continue to supply engines for the series. The new engine, which will debut in 2012, is a 2.4-liter twin-turbo V6 that will replace the current V8 supplied by Honda. The company says the new lease price for the engine will cost 40% less than the current engine. And according to Autoblog, even though the series will allow other manufacturers to supply engines starting in 2012, Honda is the only one to commit so far. And Honda's been the sole engine supplier to the series since 2006. Little known fact, most of those engines are made in Plymouth, Michigan. Volkswagen has completed its acquisition of the famous Ital design, founded by the renowned Giorgetto Giugiaro. Based in Torino, Ital design designed countless iconic vehicles over the years, including the first VW Golf and numerous Lamborghinis. The Giugiaro family still owns about 10% of the company. To accommodate different projects, Martin Vinterkorn, V-Dub's chairman of the board, said that the company will be expanding Etal Design's team of designers in the future. You know, statistically speaking, riding the bus is actually the safest way for kids to get to school. Safer than being driven, safer than riding a bike, even safer than walking. But by the time they get to high school, it's just not cool to ride the bus, except for maybe this one. CNET.com reports that a guy in Indianapolis took a completely different and possibly insane approach to tackling this problem. He built a jet-powered school bus. Unbelievably, this bright yellow peeper mover can hit a top speed of 367 miles an hour, and it can shoot 80-foot flames out the back. Obviously, the bus was heavily modified to reach these speeds because you just can't strap an aircraft engine on top and hit the accelerator. Only about 5% of it is original. The rest is exotic, handcrafted metal. And I tell you, I'd even start riding the bus again if I could get a ride like that. The Ford Fiesta and Mazda 2 are supposedly built off the same platform, but there sure are a lot of differences between the two. In fact, you almost wonder why they even share the same platform. We'll show you what we're talking about right after this. Introducing Bridgestone's third generation of run-flat tires with groundbreaking new Bridgestone technologies. Bridgestone run-flat tires offer improved ride comfort, lower rolling resistance, and improved wear while giving you the peace of mind and comfort you need. 
Ford and Mazda seem to be going their separate ways. Even though the two companies still share some resources, they're definitely doing things differently. Seamus McElroy filed this report on the differences between the Ford Fiesta and the Mazda 2. We're here in Montreal with the new Mazda 2, which just so happens to be coming out around the same time as the Ford Fiesta. And even though the two companies co-developed the architecture together, as you'll find out, they don't have a whole lot in common. For starters, both have completely different powertrains. The Mazda 2 is powered by a 1.5 liter four cylinder that cranks out just 100 horsepower, compared to the Fiesta, which has a 1.6 liter four cylinder with 120 horsepower. Both are available with five-speed manuals, but the Mazda 2 has the option for a five-speed automatic, while the Fiesta is available with a six-speed dual-clutch transmission. Because of these powertrain differences, the Mazda gets worse fuel economy than the Fiesta. As I mentioned before, the Mazda 2 and the Fiesta share the same architecture, but Mazda says the vehicles only share four parts. Very little is really shared between the cars, so there are only four parts. Uh, that are actually in, in common between the cars, like the wheel bearings and uh, a link in the, in the front suspension and the upper strut mount, and that's it. Uh, everything else is unique to, to, to each car. Uh, so you end up, you have a very different character for each car. Uh, it end up being really distinct. Since this is a car that will be sold around the globe, Mazda's designers in Japan and Europe collaborated on the look with the goal of creating a sporty looking hatch. The car has a very uh, dynamic wedge line keeps the side window graphic very sporty, very uh, forward oriented. Um, the car's all about agility and dynamic. So the car's got a real forward stance, prominent front fender, and that gives the car a lot of movement even when it's parked and standing still. So that's very important. Uh, very expressive Mazda front face, fits really well with our overall uh, lineup. And uh, short front and rear overhangs, really key. Get those wheels at the corner, and really make it look stable and capable at the end of the day. The company is aiming for sales of 20,000 in the U.S. and the same amount in Canada as well, with about 20% of those being equipped with manual transmissions. Two trims are available and Mazda expects that each will evenly split sales. In a growing and very competitive B segment, it will be real interesting to see if the Mazda 2 can stand out. In Quebec, Canada, I'm Seamus McElroy for AutoLine Daily. Thanks for that report, Seamus. The Mazda 2 is on sale right now with a starting price of just over $14,700. Hey, don't forget, next week, Wednesday, we'll be broadcasting live from Woodward Avenue in Royal Oak, Michigan for our special Dream Cruise edition of AutoLine After Hours. The party starts at 6 p.m. Eastern Time. You can watch everything live from our website, AutolineDetroit.tv, or you can join us in person. We'll be broadcasting from the Balmoral Center at Woodward and Normandy. Everyone is welcome to attend. In fact, if you've got classic iron that you'd like to show off, hit the John's Journal page on our website. We've got a form there where you can register your car for the party. You can also email us at viewermail at autolinedetroit.tv to submit your vehicle. Hope to see you there. And that is it for the top news in today's global automotive industry. Thanks for watching. We'll see you tomorrow.